Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. I know we're getting to the point in the semester where things start to get a little hectic. This video is going to go over the secondary source assignment, uh, which is the next major assignment that we have in English 330. So for this assignment, you are going to compose a two to three page summary a scholarly, scholarly article on uh, Kindred Never Let Me Go or American Chinese. And the goal of this assignment is basically to do two things. Uh, first, it is to familiarize you with secondary sources and the field of literature. Uh, and the second thing is to help prepare you for your final essay, which is going to ask you to use at least two scholarly secondary sources uh, in your paper. So uh, the first thing you need to do for this is to find a scholarly article uh, to summarize. And you are welcome to uh, pick one of the articles that we've already read. And those are articles that you can find on Blackboard. Uh, the article that we read on Kindred was uh, Kindred Revision, sorry, was Kindred uh, Revision, sorry, was Kindred History Revision and Rememory of Bodies by Gregory Hampton. Uh, the article that we read on Never Let Me Go was Testimony and the Affirmation of Memory and Kazo uh, Ishiguro's Never Let Me Go uh, by Eugene Teo. And the article that we uh, are reading right now uh, on American Born Chinese is How Good It Is to Be a Monkey, Comics, Racial Formation, and American Born Chinese uh, by Yin Hyung Song. So any of those articles works. Uh, you can also choose to review another source, as long as it is published in a peer-reviewed journal or an academic book. And as I say on the slide here, uh, libraries pay a lot of money for these kinds of sources. Uh, so you, you can usually only access them through databases like the MLA, International Bibliography, and you usually can't access them uh, through internet browsers like Google, or if you do, they're, they're usually gonna be behind a paywall. So if you want to look for those, uh, you should usually start through the uh, WSU library databases. And if you do choose to review something else, I highly recommend that you run it by me first, so to make sure that it meets the requirements for this assignment. Any paper that's on a non-academic source, so this might be an interview or a book review, uh, will automatically fill the assignment. So it's very important that you run them by me first. Okay, so for this assignment, um, you are essentially going to summarize a scholarly article or a book chapter, uh, and you are not going to be writing a literary analysis paper. So this means you will not be making an argument about the novel or a graphic novel for this paper. So the focus of this paper is not the novel itself, um, but it's an article about the novel. And because this is not an essay necessarily, uh, you're welcome to use headings or other formatting tools to help you organize your assignment. And uh, as I say here, um, the first step to doing this is to find a source. And after you do that, you should read it carefully. Um, you know, definitely look up any unfamiliar words or terms, uh, read sections that don't make sense. And you're also welcome to run things by me and to set up a web to talk about the article with me if you want. And then when you feel like you have a solid grasp on what it, the article is saying, I want you to essentially answer five questions. So the first question I want you to answer is just simply, what is the bibliographic information for the article? So this means that I want you to put an MLA style citation for the article as it would appear on a works cited page at the top of the paper. And you can find a handout on Blackboard that shows you how to construct those for uh, articles, like the ones that we read for in, read in this class. The second question I want you to consider is, what is the author's central argument about the novel or the graphic novel? So this means that I want you to summarize the author's central argument in your own words. And sometimes the author will state their central argument in the first paragraph, uh, but sometimes the author won't do that. Sometimes they'll wait a little bit longer to clarify uh, their argument. So don't necessarily assume it's in the first paragraph. In fact, a lot of times, uh, because these articles are so much longer and the introductions are longer than one paragraph, 
what will happen is that the author will begin by setting up other people's arguments to so talk about what other people have said. And after they've said, explain what other people have said, then they'll present their position and explain how their position is sort of different from what other people have said. So, you know, keep an eye out for that pattern. This pattern where they say, this is what other people have said, and then this is what I say. Because they're usually going to begin by saying what other people have said, and then they're going to distinguish their position from other people's position. So uh, keep an eye out for that. That can be a sort of useful cue to help you identify when the author is actually presenting their argument or their thesis. And then the next question is sort of related to this pattern I just talked about. So this question is, how does the author engage with other scholars? So most literary critics, uh, who are the scholars, the write articles like the ones we're reading, uh, will refer to other critics uh, or theorists when they're developing their argument. And so other critics would be other uh, scholars who have written about the novels, and other theorists would be uh, writers who aren't necessarily writing about literature, but who present philosophical ideas. Um, so, you know, ideas about memory or ideas about race or things like that. That and these and scholars, when they're writing about literature, will, will often pull on these ideas and try to apply them to works of literature. So I want you to think about what other uh, critics, theorists, or scholars the author of your article mentions. And then related to that, how the author engages with those critics or those theorists' ideas. So who are they uh, talking about? Who are they referencing? And then how are they positioning themselves in relation to those ideas? And if you are writing on one of the articles we've already read in this class, I give you some specific questions to guide this part of the secondary source assignment. So if you're writing on the article on Kindred by Gregory Hampton, um, I especially want you to think about um, what Gregory Hampton does with the ideas of August Meyer. So in his article, he cites August Meyer, who's an important historian uh, of African American history. So which of Meyer's claims does Hampton highlight in his article, and how does he use that to develop his own argument about kindred? So what ideas of Meyer's does Hampton pick up on and summarize, and then how does Hampton build on those ideas and apply those ideas to his own interpretation of kindred? If you uh, choose to write on uh, Eugene Teo's article on Never Let Me Go, uh, I want you to especially think about uh, what he um, does and what he says about Paul Ricoeur. So in his article on Never Let Me Go, Eugene Teo discusses Paul Ricoeur's understanding of memory and testimony. According to Teo, uh, who is Ricoeur's, what, sorry, what is Ricoeur's theory of memory and testimony and how does Teo apply it to Never Let Me Go? So I want you to identify, first of all, you know, what is it that Teo thinks is important about Ricoeur's ideas, and then how is, does he apply those ideas to the novel Never Let Me Go? And then finally, um, the article that um, we're reading on American born Chinese um, begins with the discussions of several scholars, uh, theories about race and racial formations. And in particular, a song looks at the work of Walter Ben Michaels and Paul Gilroy. So if you pick this article, I want you to think about uh, and discuss what points song highlights. So uh, what ideas of Michaels and Gilroy's does song highlight in, in the article? And then how does she use them to set up her own argument? about American born Chinese. So how does she take these ideas and build on them in her own argument about American born Chinese? And so those are three sort of really useful starting points if you are talking about the article, one of the articles that we've already read in this class. And if you're choosing another article, um, you'll probably need to do a little bit more legwork as far as figuring out, you know, what are the key authors that those, that the, or the key critics or theorists that the author is engaging with and uh, how they're building on that argument. Um, but, you know, I'm happy to talk about that a little bit more uh, if you want. And then the fourth question that I want you to consider is how is the article organized? So most academic articles in literary studies are organized into multiple sections. Uh, so there's usually an introduction and a conclusion. And then in addition to those two sections, there's usually several other sections that develop a part of the main argument. 
And sometimes these sections are labeled with headings and they're really easy to identify. Uh, or And sometimes they're separated with like extra white space. So there'll be, you know, there'll be like space in between each of the sections. And that makes it easy to sort of visually identify these different pieces of the argument. Uh, sometimes, however, the reader has to actually rely on transitions within the article in order to figure out its main sections and how these sections are related. So what I want you to do is to identify the different sections of the article that you've chosen. So, you know, aside from the introduction conclusion, what are the main sort of sections? Um, how is the article, the, the, the article is divided into? And then I want you to explain what the main point of each section is, how the author supports these points. So for example, the author may uh, talk about specific characters or events or language uh, that supports the points that they're making in these sections. And then finally, I want you to explain how these points support the author's overall argument. So, you know, what are the sort of pieces of the article aside from the introduction and conclusion? What are the main points of each of those sections? How, does, how are those main points supported? And how do those main points in turn support the overall argument or the thesis of the article itself. And then the last question, question five, is how would you engage or how could you engage with the author's ideas? And this is in part to help you prepare for that final essay. So at the end of this class, in a couple weeks, you're going to need to write your own paper um, that engages with other critics' ideas. So I want you to think about what questions or themes you are interested in, and you can definitely take a look at the assignment prompt for the final essay. There's some questions there that can get you started thinking about what you might write on. So, you know, drawing on those questions uh, or other ideas you might have, what do you think is interesting about the novel or graphic novel that you want to write on? And how could you draw on ideas or points presented in the article in order to develop your own argument about the novel? So this might be the main point of the article. So Gregory Hampton's article, if you think back to it, is about how uh, Kindred sort of um, presents a kind of different kind of slave narrative and provides information that, that uh, traditional real slave narratives couldn't provide. So if you wanted to talk about the overall structure of Kindred or how it uh, presents slavery, you could certainly bring in Hampton's main point. However, Hampton also makes some really interesting smaller points about characters like Alice and the character of Dana and specifically how uh, sexual assault is depicted within the novel. So if you wanted to write a paper that was just on sort of Alice um, or just on uh, the sort of sexual sexual exploitation <laughs> in the novel, um, you could also latch onto those sort of smaller points that Hampton makes and uh, draw on those to support your own argument as well. Uh, or uh, conversely, uh, if there's something that Hampton said that you strongly disagree with and you want to build a paper around that disagreement, right? He said something you know, about sort of seeing, I believe, Alice as this sort of heroic figure. So if you vehemently disagree with that and want to write a paper that uh, disagrees with that, and then you could also do that as well. So you could also, uh, you know, position yourself as uh, disagreeing with Hampton. And that's another way that you could uh, position yourself in relation um, and engage with Hampton's ideas. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. But what I ultimately want you to be doing is thinking about how you can engage with these ideas um, in order to sort of develop and defend your own argument about the novel. Okay, so those are the main questions that I want you to discuss. And this isn't a paper, so I don't necessarily need, it doesn't need to be structured like a paper. If you just want to have a heading, you know, that says question one and gives the uh, bibliographic information and then a heading that says question two and answers each of these questions in order, that's totally fine. Uh, this, you know, this is an assignment that's not necessarily a formal essay. So you're welcome to, you know, use different kinds of tools and different kinds of organizations to do that if you want. Um, however, there are some things I am looking for. So the paper or the assignment, I should say, um, should be two to three full pages. Uh, so it shouldn't be one and a half pages. Um, and assignments that are too short will be penalized. Uh, it should follow MLA style formatting. Um, so this means that it should be typed in 12.29 times New Roman font. It should be double spaced. It has, should have one inch margins on each side. It should have the page number and your last name on the top right corner. And the first page should have a heading. So it should have 
uh, the top left corner should have your name, um, the instructor's name, my name, uh, the class, and the date. And then any quotations uh, that you present in the paper should be properly formatted and documented. So this means that you should parenthetically cite the page number of any quotations, and that includes the page number for articles. So if you're citing from an article, you need to present the page number that that quotation came from. Just making sure. And then the assignment is due on Sunday, November 24th. So that's the Sunday before um, we head into Thanksgiving weekend. And you can find the submission area in the week 14 folder. So there'll be a drop box there for you to submit it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to either post to the Ask My Instructor discussion board or reach out. Uh, and otherwise, I will look forward to seeing what you have to say about the article that you picked.